The intent of this video is to describe the mechanics and usage of the World War II deployed M47 Burster Igniter Incendiary Bomb. This was one of the main incendiary bombs used in the firebombing campaign of Japanese cities. As discussed in the previous videos, 21st Bomber Command encountered B-29 accuracy and attrition issues while bombing Japan adopting the same bombing techniques as practiced in the European theater. To mitigate these issues, bombing techniques were changed to include bombing at low altitude, at night, fly singly, no formation flying, and target whole cities with incendiaries. This chart outlines the tabular data of the urban area firebombing campaign from a declassified 1947 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled A Report on Physical Damage in Japan. The columns of the data represent the Japanese city name in alphabetical order, date of the attack, 21st Bomber Command mission number, B-29s over the target, day or night mission, altitude of attack, number of aiming points, in a bolometer setting for the Pathfinder and main force. The Pathfinders would be sent around 20 minutes ahead of the main force to mark the target and start appliance fires. The B-29 Pathfinders adopted the M-47 incendiary bombs at the longer in a bolometer settings. The main strike force would drop M69 bomblets at the shorter intervalometer setting. This gives a denser bomb pattern. The time over target in minutes, type of bomb, and tonnage of bombs dropped. The M69s are in this column and represent 47% of the total incendiary tonnage dropped. The M47s are in this column and represent 27% of total incendiaries dropped. Total tonnage per raid and square miles destroyed. This table completes the remaining Japanese cities firebomb from Osaka to Yokohama. The March 9th Tokyo firebomb raid, which killed 100,000 Japanese, is shaded in this row. The incendiaries of the raid included 1,539 tons of M69s and 128 tons of M47s. This map from a November 1945 commanding general to the Secretary of War report outlines the percent Japanese city destroyed by B-29 incendiary raids. The equivalent U.S. city is also listed. For example, 39.9% of Tokyo was destroyed with New York as its sister city. Usage and details of the M69 firebombs and why the U.S. resorted to firebombing Japanese urban areas was covered in the channel's previous videos. This table, from a September 1945 National Defense Research Committee document titled Weapons Data Fire Impact Explosions, outlines the characteristics of World War II incendiary bombs. The M47A2 incendiary bomb is highlighted in this row. The bomb's full-up weight equated to 72 pounds. The bomb is 8.12 inches in diameter and 48.9 inches in length. The bomb was filled with 40 pounds of napalm. The bomb contained an M13 burster and an M9 igniter as part of its detonation train. The bomb liberated 669,000 BTUs of heat, which included a small amount of white phosphorus within the M9 igniter. The detonation train was started by the ANM 126A1 fuse. Bomb impact speed was 740 feet per second if dropped from an altitude of 20,000 feet. Multiple bombs could be loaded in a single bomb rack station. Additional characteristics of the M47A2 incendiary bomb are shown on this page from an October 1944 Army Air Forces project document titled A Study of Incendiary Bombs for Employment by the United States Army Air Forces. Parameters of the M47A2 bomb are shown in this column. The bomb scatters its 40 pounds of napalm over a 50-foot radii. Napalm burn time is approximately 10 minutes. The bomb can penetrate 5 inches of concrete if dropped from an altitude of 25,000 feet. Safe release altitude equates to 200 feet. The bomb's casing wall thickness equates to 60,007 inch, as shown on this table from a September 1947 United States Naval Bomb Disposal document titled Bombs and Fuses Pyrotechnics. The T-19 cluster adapter can support six M-47 bombs at a single bomb station. The image shows a cutaway of the M-47 bomb from a U.S. Army Chemical Materials Activities document titled U.S. Chemical Weapons and Related Reference Materials. The bomb's fuse, burster, and igniter are shown in these views. 
The M47 bomb will spray its 40 pounds of napalm 50 feet or more when detonated. The bomb will penetrate a roof and spray its napalm throughout the interior. The bomb's penetrating power is good if released at altitudes above 15,000 feet. It will not bury itself in the ground though. Its steel casing is one-fifth the gauge of a standard 500 pound demolition bomb like the M64. It is also a good all-around incendiary bomb for industrial targets. Smaller and more numerous bombs like the M60 cluster bomblets will be more efficient in starting multiple residential fires. The 40 pounds of napalm is of sufficient weight for starting fires, even at locations without kindling. The M47 will require an immediate firefighting reaction. It will be well suited for starting appliance type fires. Let's talk about the M47 bomb suspension system. I was always puzzled whenever I saw a B-29 releasing massive amounts of bombs, like in this image. The B-29 bomb racks have only 40 stations. This is some footage of the forward bomb bay of the B-29, which is loaded with 500 pound general purpose high explosive bombs. The smaller bombs can be carried at each one of these stations with cluster adapters. This image outlines the installation of the T-19 cluster adapter. The T-19 cluster cable adapter can suspend six M-47 bombs. Six bombs per cluster times 40 stations equates to 240 M47 bombs. However, due to clearance and interference issues, a maximum of 144 M47 bombs can be safely loaded on the B-29, as discussed in this conclusion section from a November 1944 Army Air Force Board report titled Preliminary Report on Multiple Suspensions of Bombs in the B-29 Airplane. This image shows the T-19 adapter suspending six M47 bombs at one of the B-29's 40 bomb stations. This image outlines the incendiary bomb carrying capacity capacity of various World War II U.S. bombers. The B-29 is in this row. The M-47 bomb is in this column. The B-29s can carry 144 M-47 bombs if suspended with the T-19 cluster adapter. This equates to 5.18 tons of bombs. 96.4 million BTUs of heat will be liberated. This image shows the release of M47 incendiaries over Kobe, Japan on June 5, 1945. Imagine each one of those bombs contains 6.25 gallons of napalm. This graph provides both the M47 strike speed and obliquity angle of impact. The x-axis is a bomb release altitude in feet. The y-axis is a ground speed at bomb release in miles per hour. The curves in the body of the chart are the strike angle in degrees and bomb strike speed in feet per second. For example, the 314th wing was to bomb Tokyo at an altitude between 5,000 and 5,800 feet, as discussed on this 21st Bomber Command Tactical Mission Report page outlining the March 9, 1945 Operation Meeting House 2 mission. The first squadron over the target will bomb with M47s adopting the T-19 cluster adapters with instantaneous nose views. Intervalometer settings for the M47s is at 100 feet. Bomb release calibrated airspeed set to 230 miles per hour. No ammo to be carried. We will discuss what this means in an upcoming video. Crews were instructed to drop your incendiary bombs on urban areas not on fire. B-29s were to bomb at a calibrated airspeed of 230 miles per hour. This was due to the bomb bay door open buffeting loads encountered at speeds of 240 miles per hour. As discussed on this March 1945 memo from LeMay to bomber wings, we can now convert the 230 miles per hour calibrated airspeed to ground speed by assuming indicated airspeed equates to calibrated airspeed and using this chart from a 1944 Boeing document titled B-29 Superfortress, some flying information. Start at an indicated airspeed upper x-axis of 230 miles per hour, then down to the 5400 foot altitude line. Draw a horizontal line to the standard day temperature of 4 degrees centigrade. Draw a vertical line down to the true airspeed axis. True airspeed equates to 242 miles per hour. Assume no head or tail wind while bombing, therefore the airspeed equals the ground speed. 
Based on this data, intersect the 242 mile per hour ground speed at a 5400 foot altitude. The M47 bomb will strike the ground at around 520 feet per second or 355 miles per hour at an obliquity angle of 25 degrees. This chart outlines the time of fall for various bombs from a May 1945 SINPAC Flak Intelligence Memorandum titled Methods of Flak Analysis. This column represents the M47 bomb. Interpolation of the bomb parameters indicate the M47 bomb will free fall for a duration of 19.9 seconds. Additional M47 bombing parameters needed by the B-29's Bombardier Norton bombsite adjustments are located in this table for reference. Let's discuss the clever mechanics of the M47's detonation train. This chart describes the M47's M126A1 fuse. The fuse has no detonation train time delay function at fuse contact. The fuse is armed when the fuse's vanes rotate 260 revolutions. When the B-29's bombardier releases the T-19 cluster adapter from the bomb station shackle, the vane safety wire will pull back. This frees the vanes to rotate when exposed to the slipstream. The bombs will separate from the T-19 cluster adapter. The vanes will rotate the fuse's inner gearing. At 260 revolution, the fuse's safety systems are disengaged and the striker is aligned. At impact, the firing pin strikes a detonator which ignites the booster cup. The booster cup ignites the M13 burster. The M13 burster is shown on the left view and the M9 igniter is shown on the right view from an August 1960 Bureau of Naval Weapons document titled Aircraft Bombs, Fuses, and Associated Components. The burster's explosive fill is 65 grams of TNT and 0.41 grams of tetral pellets. The 65 grams of TNT occupy this volume. The 0.41 grams of tetral occupies this volume. Tetral is a more sensitive explosive. The M47's bomb fuse will detonate the tetral, which detonates the TNT. The tube is 36 inches in length and 0.45 inches in diameter. When it's assembled, the M13 burster slides into the M9's igniter's inner sleeve shaded here and compresses the sleeve spring. The loading of the burster into the igniter is done in the field. The igniter's fill is 1.6 pounds of white phosphorus. The detonated burster will both ignite the white phosphorus and spray the napalm. The white phosphorus will evenly ignite the 40 pounds of napalm. This image shows the assembled white phosphorus high explosive burster igniter cross-section view from the reference shown earlier. This view shows a static detonation of an M47 bomb using white phosphorus high explosive burster igniter. The napalm is thrown upwards and outwards. The burst covered 150 feet across with 50 globs of napalm while burning for around 10 minutes. During the March 9, 1945 Tokyo firebomb raid, M47s were carried by the Wings Pathfinders as discussed on this page from an April 1947 United States Strategic Survey report titled Effects of Incendiary Attacks on Japan. The Pathfinders both started appliance fires and marked the aiming point for the bombers that followed later. Each Pathfinder carried a maximum of 184 M47s at 6 M47s per B-29 bomb station, adopting the M19 cluster adapter. Bomber Command must have found a safe way to exceed the recommended 144 M47 carry limit. All other follow-on aircraft carried the M69 napalm bomblets set for canister release at either 2,000 or 2,500 feet. Intervalometer settings were 50 feet for cluster canisters and 100 feet for the M47 bombs. The Pathfinder strike first, then the main force dropping cluster canisters filled with the M69 bomblets. The M47 incendiary bombs were unable to penetrate concrete buildings. This is an example of a Japanese building where the M47s could not penetrate. However, they were able to penetrate Japanese residential roofs and burst around 10 feet below the roof line. Couple images of typical Japanese dwellings and urban areas within the firebomb zone. This image shows the penetration of an M47 bomb that went through a tile roof. If the M47s burst 10 feet below the roof and they're traveling at 520 feet per second at contact, then the bomb will burst 0.02 seconds after contact. 5 to 10% of the M47s were duds based on Japanese data. 
This table lists the March 9, 1945 Tokyo Strike Firebomb Disposition. The roll-ups for the bombs on target are listed in this row and column. 3,683 M47 incendiary bombs were dropped on Tokyo that night, in addition to the 324,000 M69 bomblets that were also dropped. This is around 165,000 gallons of napalm dropped on Tokyo on the night of March 9, 1945. It took, on average, 1.65 gallons of napalm for every Japanese death. Both the E-28 and E-46 cluster containers carry 38 M-69 bomblets. If you found this video worth your time, please consider engaging by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.